Welcome to the Personal Perseverance Project. My name is David Atkins, retired New York State trooper, million dollar direct sales, international business earner, author, and keynote motivational speaker, where each week I come here to help you break through your excuses so you can live a life up to your fullest potential. Let the project begin. That is my mindset. I operate on a level of excellence and you guys need to wake up every single day and you need to operate on a level of excellence and create your masterpiece. What's up guys and welcome to this episode of the Personal Perseverance Project for me to really dive into my morning routine, my specific morning routine for success. Now guys, I want to start off and say a couple things. Number one is this. My morning routine is constantly evolving. It's constantly improving. I'm constantly trying to find ways to better myself and improve. So what I am going to share with you today is not even what I did one year ago. It's not even what I did six months ago. It's what I'm doing right now, early 2024, that I feel 100% has made a positive difference in my life, in all areas of my life, okay? But I'm going to also say this, like I, I said in my last original episode in this personal perseverance project, I choose the word perseverance. It's it's hanging up in my office, but the name perseverance is in this podcast, and I'm talking about it again because this is not meant to be easy. I want to say that again. All of the things that I'm going to share on here, all of the things that I want to give to you, to give value to you so that you can go out there and apply them to your life are not easy. Why? Because probably you have developed habits, as have I through the years, that will require you to get uncomfortable. That's why I said in my first podcast in the first episode, this is not for people who are going to blame they're too busy. This is not for people that are going to play victim mentality. This is not for people who are going to blame the woe me, life is horrible mentality with things I'm going to share. This is for people who are saying, you know what, David, I'm ready to make a change. You know what? I'm ready to not let the adversity knock me down. You know what, David? I have big dreams. I have big goals. How do I get there? Well, I'm going to share them with you because I am doing them myself. It's not stuff that I heard from other people. It's stuff that I have used to help me, you know, grow through the ranks of the state police, build a big business, be a motivational keynote speaker, write a book, have a podcast. So I want to give you things that have been tried and tested that work. So I'm not here to just share with you things that I think may work, things for you to try out. It's things I'm going to share with you that if you follow exactly what I'm going to share with you, your life will change for the better. But at the end of the day, it's nobody else's job to support your goals or your dreams but yourself. It is on you. Nobody's going to rescue you. Nobody's going to come pick you up when you got knocked down. Nobody's going to be there for you late at night or early in the morning to do these things I'm going to share with you. You need to do the work. John Maxwell talks about the law of intentionality. And the law of intentionality is simply this. You have to be intentional to do the things to improve your life. If you live your life in reactive mode and you live it as if it every day is like an accident, it's not going to work. You have to be intentional in your activities. And I, I'm probably going to open up many of my podcast episodes like this because I want people to know right out of the gate, you want to succeed, you want to get better, it's on you. You want the best tips to get there quicker, then this is what this podcast is for. And you can achieve greatness. You can achieve success a lot quicker than I have because I'm going to share you, share with you things that I wish I knew a long time ago. Okay, so I want to get that out of the way. And and remember this: you will always be a student. You will always need to grow. You will always need to improve. Even right now, I am constantly listening and learning and trying to get better because success leaves. Clues. I'll say that again. Success leaves clues. So I find somebody that has what I want and I do what they do. 
I am about finding, let me say that again, find somebody that has what you want and do what they do. So for me, I study and I listen to people that are succeeding at the highest levels and then I apply it and I make it work for me. So for me, right now, I want to share this with you. And no matter where you are in your morning routine, I don't want you to beat yourself up. I'm not telling you that what I'm going to give you, you need to do with 100% accuracy starting right now. But I need you to say, I'm drawing a line in the sand. I'm going to work on improving tomorrow because your kids, your family, your coworkers, the world needs the best of you. I like to say often on stage when I speak um, on stage, one of the things I open about is by you not, I like to say, I'm going to share this. By you not living up to your potential, by you not having that vision for your life to improve, by you not being the best human being for your family, for your kids, for the people you interact with every single day, you are robbing the world of you. You are robbing the world of the best version of you. So it's time to get to work. It's time to get in the lab. It's time to start doing the things that are going to help improve your life. So now that I got that out of that out of the way, let's dive into exactly what's going on. I got some my paper here to write my notes down because what I do in the morning, I want to make sure I don't miss anything. It's it's become a routine for me. It's not, you know, it's habits that have turned into routines. Big difference. Habits are things you're trying to do, you know, every single day, but when it becomes routine, you do it without thinking, like brushing your teeth, okay? So this has become a routine for me with what I'm going to share with you. So right now, present day, what is going on for me right now? Number 1 is this. My alarm is going off at 4.15 in the morning. Yes, 4.15 in the morning. And some of you may say, but David, I go to bed so late at night. I know I spoke about this on the last episode, but the thing is this. For me, it's like lights out at 9.30. I need my six and a half, seven hours sleep. That's what's healthy for me. That's what I need. If you are somebody that stays up late, you you are going to have to eventually change your cycle and get to bed earlier so you can have a successful morning routine because this is going to impact your day in a positive and negative way. Wake up just in time to get yourself to work and kids off to school. Well, then expect to be overwhelmed and not as productive where you wake up early and take care of yourself first. So for me right now, and guys, this is the thing. I am, I'm self-motivated to do this and I'm not working for anybody but myself, right? I'm already, I'm retired from the state police. Being an entrepreneur, having my body business, being a speaker, I'm the only person I'm accountable to and I'm still getting up at 4.15 in the morning. Why 4.15? Because I want to get everything done so I have time to get home Take my, get my one daughter to the bus, take my other daughter to high school. I like to get it done first because once I take care of myself first, then everybody else gets the best of me. So the first thing, guys, is 4.15 a.m. I get up in the morning. You have to figure out your time. But I can tell you right now, it's not 7 a.m. It's not 8 a.m. I can tell you it's probably going to be closer to 5 a.m. For many of you, it's 4.15. Why 4.15 as well? Because the first hour of my morning, the first hour of my morning is spent on my mindset. Guys, I'm going to give you a stat. It's, a, it's an unbelievable stat. I'm going to share with you right now, okay, this stat. That on average, and you can Google it, you can look it up, but this is stuff, this is through research. On average, the human being has about 60,000 thoughts a day. 60,000 thoughts a day. And you know what percentage of them? I'm looking down at this. It's unbelievable. 80% of your thoughts are negative and 95% of your thoughts are repeated thoughts that you think about over and over and over again. And it's so often it's the negative self-talk that you're doing to yourself day in and day out over and over again, right? So the only way you're going to improve is to be that jolt in your brain to do the things to have you start thinking differently. And you need to be intentional about it, okay? You need to be intentional in the things that I'm about to go over because I can tell you right now, you have to work on your mindset. If this isn't right, if your mindset isn't right, you are going to struggle in every area because it's the old fight or flight syndrome. Your brain is there to protect you, but you're not... 
being, it's not trying to protect you like you're in a cave and you're battling and surviving for life like hundreds and thousands of years ago. So what is it doing now? It's the fear that's there. It's the self-doubt. It's, David, you can't do this. You're not going to succeed at that. You're horrible. You're not worth it. You're not good enough. All of those things. So you need to do something about it. So guys, the number one thing I do, I, I come downstairs, 4.15, I drink my pre-workout drink. I call it my go-go juice. It's Energize. It's a body performance line drink. I've been drinking it for years because for me, it takes about 20, 30 minutes to kick in. So when I'm downstairs, I drink my pre-workout. And then during that time, I go into my family room. I sit down on my couch with a pillow behind my back. I pull my hooded sweatshirt, which I always wear up over my head. And I put my AirPods in, my my AirPods in, and I start with an app that I have that is positive affirmations, okay? Why positive, audio positive affirmations? Why? Because when you listen to positive affirmations, and I'm going to dive into what they could be, it's going to help you overcome fear. It's going to help you overcome self-doubt. You are going to rewire your brain to start processing the good in the world. Now, let me give you an example how this works, right? In a way, it activates your subconscious throughout the day. It's something called your reticular activating activating system, the RAS part of your brain. Let me give you an example. How often have you been in a position in your life right? Where you get a new car or a car in a certain color, right? And then next thing you know, you get this new car and now you're driving around your town and you start seeing that car everywhere, right? How many people have had that happen? That is the RAS part of your brain being in tune to recognizing all of the cars that are similar to yours. It's not that all of a sudden these cars appear to be there. It's just that you've activated a part of your brain to be in tune to pay attention to those cars that are similar to yours. Same thing with the positive affirmations. When you are giving your brain all the positive affirmations in your life, it's going to keep your brain in tune to look at all the good in the world, to find solutions in the world, it's kind of like somebody said, David, I want you to go out and count all of the red cars you see, right? And you're going to start counting them. You're like, my God, there's red cars everywhere. Well, that's your brain activated to look for opportunity. Well, when you activate your brain with positive affirmations, you also will start thinking and seeing things in a positive life. Guys, this works. I'm not telling you that you should try. I'm telling you it works. So what are some of the areas I have positive affirmations in? It could be your family, right? I say I am a, I am a loving husband. I, am, I have a healthy family, right? I, and and you, when you do the affirmations, you want to talk in the current, not I want to have a healthy family. I have a healthy family. I am a loving father and husband. When it comes to your health, I have a healthy life. I am strong. I am full of energy. I inspire others every single day. When it's your finances, something that so many people struggle with money, money, money will flow to me with abundance. I have, for me as a speaker, I have I I am being sought after as a keynote speaker, being paid. X amount of dollars, whatever that dollar figure is, even though I'm not there, I'm talking, I'm talking as if it's a reality, right? I also, for me, and one of the things I'm going to talk about, I have a Bible quote in there. One for me that's is super important. My favorite quote quote from Philippians 4:13 is I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I say these things and I repeat these things and it goes through two times. Now, guys, there are many apps out there and they give you self prompts to create positive affirmations that work towards the goals in your life, career, finances, health, relationships, all of these areas. You fill it out. I believe the one I, I, I have, I have to look, I think it's happy life, I think what it is, but there's many out there. I plug it in, there's soothing music, and it repeats about a dozen affirmations twice. It plays for about three to four minutes. I do this so right away I am thinking in a good space. Guys, notice that I said at this point, and I'm going to say this, I am not looking at my email, 
I am not looking at my social media notifications because that's what most of you are doing. As soon as you get up, you are going to your email inbox. You are going to your notification tab. Let me tell you, that is somebody else's agenda. Your inbox, your social uh, media notifications is somebody else's agenda. Now, I'm going to kind of give you an inside tip. How do I avoid that happening and not having distractions? All of my notifications are off. I shut off all the banners on my phone, even throughout the day. They are shut off. When I go to bed at night, my phone goes on sleep mode. The only people that can get through to me on my phone where it's going to ding or ring is my immediate family. Everything else is shut off. From the night before, I'm starting this morning routine to set myself up for success. So you need to shut your notifications off. You need to shut your banners off, especially so when you wake up in the morning and you go to your phone to use these apps, which for me are all in one little folder area on my phone, okay? Okay. When I go there, I I don't get distracted by application, other apps, by notifications, by my email, because you will get sucked in. That is not the time for this. It is going to be so hard, but you can't do it. You need to now literally go to your settings right now, shut everything off. When it's time to go to your email, you go and be the best self you can and go to your email. When it's time to go to your social media notifications, go to your social media. Not right now, not in your morning routine. So this app, I go in the first three to five minutes, I'm listening to positive affirmations. Guys, the next thing, the next thing is this meditation. Hear me out right now. And I have no problem sharing this. A few years back, I was at a point when I was between Lieutenant and captain with the state police. I was training a new Lieutenant. I was running the County. Our business wasn't going so well. Kristen was my wife. Kristen was at a conference across the country. I felt overwhelmed, stressed out, burning the candle at both ends. And I eventually said, I need to, you know, get some therapy to help me navigate this. And I did. And I'm also sharing this because I'm not worried about what other people think of me, right? right? I, I have learned that other people's opinions of you are not your reality. Other people's opinions of you are not your reality. And I'm sharing that I got therapy back then because if there's somebody that's listened to, listening to this right now, listen, we all have struggles, but there's sometimes when you get to places that you have to be willing to say, you know, I need some help. I'm letting you know it's okay to do that. Even the best performers, even the most successful celebrities, athletes have coach, life coaches, have therapists to talk through. And I'm sharing this because this is what led me to meditation. She says, David, If you don't start meditating to kind of slow yourself down, you're going to end up giving yourself, like for real, like you're going to give yourself a heart attack. So for me, I was against meditation at first. I was somebody like you that's probably saying, David, my brain never rests. It's always going 100 miles an hour. I can't sit still. My brain is going to be going so quickly, and I get it. But here's the thing. If you were willing to try, And for me, it was getting an app that was guided meditation. There's many apps out there. But I had an app, and there was a a female voice that did it for 10 minutes that would guide me through it. And it would guide me through inhaling for five seconds count. So inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. And you would then count one, one breath. And you would do this moment. You learn how to to calm your body down. Is it easy the first time? No. But you know what? Nothing's easy the first time. That's just life. But I did it because I want to improve. I'm sharing this with you because if you want to be in the best place mentally, physically, emotionally, all areas, you need to be doing this too. Especially in today's age when with with technology in our phones, you're being, you're being overwhelmed all day with all sorts of information. You need to be able to meditate. And this isn't about getting some crazy, oh, meditation, I'm telling you do ohms, you know, I'm familiar with that, you know, familiar with they are. I'm just telling you, it helps calm your headspace, okay? And it is proven through science, it will help reduce your stress. It will help, excuse me, Put you in a better mood. It will help you sleep better. It will help reduce anxiety. Okay. It will help decrease blood pressure. These are all factual things through science. 
Now, here's the craziest thing I want to share with you guys that how I knew it was working for me. Early on when I started doing it and I just showed up every day, like the first was seven days of gratitude meditation or seven days of breathing count meditation. There's all sorts of them, right? What started happening a couple weeks in is that during the day, if I ever got hit with something that got me worked up or maybe something happened with my kids, parents can relate and you're like, oh my God, you feel yourself getting frustrated or you want to snap back or you may be arguing or you're at that point of the day, you just like, you know what? I can't take it anymore. You all of a sudden, I recognize, I recognize that I'm getting worked up. And here's the thing, what would happen is that all of a sudden, when you get worked up, your blood pressure goes up. When you get angry and frustrated, your blood pressure goes up, and naturally, you can't control this, your breathing gets faster. It's just the way your body is. When your body has is in a heightened state, your breathing gets shorter and faster, right? Your blood pressure goes up. I found myself all of a sudden saying, all right, David, inhale. Like in my head, I'm saying, inhale for five seconds, exhale for five seconds. And I would do that three times. I would revert to my breathing to slow my breathing down. And you know what happened? It brought my... It brought me down in that heightened state of maybe frustration, anger, like, oh my God, I feel overwhelmed and stressed. It calmed myself. My blood pressure would go down. And why was I able to do this without even thinking? Because when you practice something every day, all of a sudden your body knows how to revert to the thing to help yourself calm down. It was like mind blowing for me to be able to do this. So you you have to incorporate meditation into your life. I do between 10 and 20 minutes a day. I listen to sometimes it's just soothing music. It could be the waves from a beach. It could be the wind blowing through pine trees. There's all sorts of sounds that you can do. It can be 10 minutes of guided where somebody's talking to you, which can help. But guys, it's not going to be easy the first time. But when you do it day in and day out and you work at it just five, 10 minutes a day, it's going to help keep yourself calm and it's going to impact your life later on when you're going through a tough time in a positive way. So meditation, that's also in my morning routine as well as positive affirmations, that's number two. Guys, the third I'm gonna talk about is this. I have shared that, or I I have shared with many of you before, I went to private Catholic school my entire life through high school, from kindergarten, uh, fifth grade, middle school, through high school, went to private Catholic high school. And I can tell you right now, for me, I have become, maybe it comes with maturity, maybe it comes as we get older. Um, I am, yes, a practicing Catholic. I go to church on Sundays. I'm not here to preach God to you, preach anything, but I'm here to tell you that you have to be able to surrender your problems to something bigger than yourself. You just can't do it alone. And for me, having the faith that if I work hard, I do all the right things and surrender to God, for me in this case, that in the end, everything will be okay. Everything will be taken care of because I'm surrendering to him or surrendering to the universe or whatever it is. It gives me a sense of calm and it gives me a sense of that I'm not in this journey of life by myself. So for me, my faith, my relationship with God, Jesus Christ, whatever it is, it's a time in the morning that I also spend 15, 20 minutes of working on that relationship, working on saying that quote, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, knowing that I have the best teammate with me. And guys, when I go and speak, you know, right before I'm about to get on stage and you're by yourself and you're feeling lonely, I know that... God is with me. So for me, it's it's important to me to have this relationship that I work out every single day because it gives me a peace of mind because sometimes you just feel like you're on an island and you just feel like you're by yourself. And if you're willing to develop a spiritual relationship with whatever your beliefs are and surrender to the higher self that's not you, it in turn will make you feel at peace. You will feel stronger in your confidence it just works. Uh, so for me, yes, I am a practicing Catholic and I work at it every single day. So what am I doing in that time frame? I'll share it with you guys. So 
I have an app that's a Bible app and there's like a verse verse of the day and I read the verse of the day and, and it talks about the verse of the day. I have um, a, a book that has the daily gospels for whatever would be at mass that day in church. I read the gospel for what it is a day. Guys, this takes a minute, two minutes, right? And then I pray. And with my prayer, I always start off with something that is super important. And that is starting with gratitude. You cannot be angry and depressed and be thankful at the same time. Your brain is wired in a way you cannot be thankful in a state of gratitude and be angry and depressed at the same time. It just doesn't work. And you know what most people do every single day? We focus on what we don't have. We focus on how much further we need to go instead of seeing how far we have come or focusing on all of the good that we have. So in my prayer for me, I'm thanking God for my home, for the couch, and it's even the smallest things, for the couch that I sit on, for the blanket on my lap, for the clothes that I'm wearing, for the AirPods in my ear, for my wife and three daughters, for the health that I have, for this body that I have to be able to do these things, for the safety that I have, for living in a home, for the food in my refrigerator, for the heat that I have, for the oil that I have, for the cars that I drive, for the career I had with the state police, with the, the gift God gave me to, to be a speaker and go out there and impact the world. I go through the list every single day and I'm thankful because you're not going to be rewarded with more in life if you're not grateful for what you already have. That is like a law of the universe. It's God. It's like you have to be thankful and grateful for where you are if you are going to get more given to you in your life. You have to see the the abundance that you do have. If you are on this earth right now, if you are listening to me, that means you have breath, you have fresh air, you have a heartbeat. So no matter what struggle you're going through, it may be a page in your life, it may be a chapter in your life. This is not the book of your life. You still have time, right? So there are things to be thankful for. You are here. You are alive. You have a heartbeat. You are listening to me. There's something to be grateful for that. There are people in this world in much worse situations than you. There are people in this world who have been through much worse situations than you and are grateful for where they are right now. So you need to find the gratitude. And for me, it's in prayer. Okay, it's in prayer to give thanks to whatever you, for me, it's to God thanking him for what I have. So guys, it's prayer. So guys, after I go through my positive affirmations, okay, after I do my meditation, after I work on my relationship with God and go over the things I listed, guys, the next thing is exercise. I'm, I'm going to talk to you about this when it comes to exercise, I don't want, you cannot keep saying, I don't have enough time to exercise. Exercise will not cost you time. It will buy you time back. You will be more efficient throughout the day. You will have more energy. You will be less stressed. You will be more confident. Stop blaming the reason why you can't do it because, oh, my work's so busy overtime. My kids are so busy. Your kids should be your reasons, not your excuse. It is your duty and obligation to take care of this. Your body, you only get one of them. Take care of it and it will take care of you. I just posted on social media earlier that you can either pay now and play later or play now and pay later. Let me explain. You can pay now and play later, meaning you can have the discipline to take care of your health, to go get exercise in every single day right now in your life. So later on, as you get older, you can play later. You can be a grandparent in your golden years. You can travel. You can be mobile. You're not in a wheelchair. You're not suffering. You're not with canes. You're not having a bad back. All of those things. Or you can play now. You can have all the excuses of time, money, I'm too busy, work, blame your kids, all those things. But you know what? Later on in life, you will pay later on in life. 
you will end up all of a sudden, you may have type 2 diabetes. You may have high blood pressure. You may have high cholesterol. You may be obese. You may suffer from a stroke or a heart attack, and maybe you'll be lucky enough to survive it because of all of the bad decisions and excuses you made up into this point. I'm not here to tell you that exercise should be something that's optional. You have to do it. The most successful people in the world are taking care of their health. And if you take care of your health, Physically, it's going to impact your life in so many different ways. Your kids deserve the best of you, not what's left of you. That is plain and simple. So for me right now, I am still doing my beach body body workouts. When I get to the gym, like today, I did a leg workout from one of the workout programs, 40 minutes, hardcore lifting legs, and then I went on the treadmill and I walked for a half hour to just get more steps in, more cardio, and I'm going to give you a bonus tip of what I did in that time. But guys, you have to exercise to get the endorphins firing off in your brain. It is science. All of the feel-good chemicals will happen. Stop saying you don't have enough time. There's 24 hours in a day, no more, no less. It doesn't matter if you're the president of the United States or you are yourself. It, we all get the same 24 hours a day. We all get 86,400 seconds in a day. And the difference with those that are succeeding and those that aren't is they learn to manage their time more effectively. Oh, but David, I need, you know, my eight hours of sleep. I don't know. Sleep six hours and sleep faster. I don't know what to tell you. But for me, I'm getting up at 4.15 in the morning and I don't even have any way to report. But I am treating it like it is my J-O-B, my job, that I have to get my exercise in. Stop waking up like it's an accident and get out there and start moving your body. I'm not telling you you need to go in some crazy competition. I'm not telling you you need to run a marathon tomorrow. I'm telling you to move, to get your blood flowing and you need to be doing it more days than not. If there's seven days in a week, yes, three days... Three days may be better. Three days may be better than nothing, but you really need to be doing it more days than not. That's at least four days. For me, I'm six days a week. I'll tell you even this. On my rest day, I feel a difference in my mindset, my energy. So for me, even on my rest days, I'm doing something. A lot of times, since I'm lifting now, I'm doing another form of cardio. I'm basically going seven days a week because moving my body is that important to me. Stop Take, stop, my God, making the excuses. Your excuses are well-planned lies. You need to be taking care of your health and get the exercise in. For me, um, when Kristen and I had our small kids and we lived in a one-bedroom home, imagine that, a one-bedroom home, we turned a loft into a second bedroom. We had a small basement with kids' toys everywhere. We would push the toys out of the way. We'd have a little area like the size of where a coffee table would sit. We'd push that to the side and we did P90X. That's how our health and wellness journey started with Beachbody is doing the workouts at home. You don't need to go to the gym. If you have time to go to the gym, great. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm going to a gym and I'm still doing my Beachbody workouts. Well, we're now called body. Our, but my body workouts, I'm doing, doing them at the gym. If you could do that, great, but you don't need to. You can do them in your kitchen. You can do them in front of your TV. You can do them at home. Get a set of dumbbells, push-ups, sit-ups. Keep it simple. Go outside for a walk. Go outside, walk a mile. Then maybe try a jog a mile. Do something. There's free things all over the world. But guys, I can't stress enough. You need to be taking care of your health. Now, here's the bonus tip that I'm doing, guys, is, is that while after I finish my weightlifting and I go on the treadmill like today for 30 minutes. You know what I did for 30 minutes? I listened to personal development. I listened to uh, other apps. I listened to books on Audible, other personal development self-help books, books on how to, you know, how to be a better leader, how to have a positive mindset, how to build wealth. Uh, t today, 10 things successful people do. Like I'm listening to things to help me improve. I'm always looking to grow and learn. I'm always willing to be coachable and teachable. Why am I doing this? Because I'm obsessed with improving my life and it doesn't happen by accident. So I'm flooding my brain with that. And guys, driving back and forth to the gym. I challenge you, instead of listening or driving back and forth to work or driving to work in the morning, instead of listening to music, how about you listen to a book on Audible? 
on Audible and listen to something that's going to help change the way you think for the better. Too many people are stressed out, strung out, and exhausted, and it comes down to that you're just going to the news. You're looking at the news. You're listening to the news in the car. You're looking at social media. The world is ending. Politics are horrible. You're watching the news at work. You come home. You're watching more news at home. Of course, you're stressed out and strung out. You know why? Because I heard a stat. This is what I heard through personal development. Up until the 1960s, I think it was the 1960s. Don't quote me on this, but there was a certain point that the news used to share positive, good, feel-good stories. All the good happening in the world, which there's a lot of good happening in the world. And then they found out that when they started sharing, you know, the sensationalized news about murders and rapes and negativity and politics and, the, and, and dividing things, that more people were watching that, more people were buying more newspapers, buying magazines, and they realized, wow, that sells better. And it really became what it is today. It's a business. It's to make money. And they don't. Call, there's a reason why they call it a TV program. It's programming your mind. So if you rely on what you're watching every single day, of course you're going to be stressed out all the time. But what if you were intentional and you listened to a good book, right? What if you got a book? What if you read even my book, The Leveled Up Life with Success Principles? Or for me, John Maxwell is a great author or Darren Hardy or Brendan Bouchard. I can give you so many names of books that I've read and that's changed me as a person because you know what? You can't give what you don't know. And for me, personal development, I learned so much I can give back. I am a different person uh, right now than I was even a year, two years, three years, 15, 20 years ago because the person you are right now, the habits you have right now, the person you are today is not going to get you to where you want to be tomorrow. Those goals that you have, the only way you're getting there is you need to go through a growth journey. And a perfect way to start to come back to everything I'm saying is with a morning routine that sets you up for success for the day. Okay. So exercise and personal development. And I'm going to have a whole nother podcast on personal development. But guys, once my exercise is done and then I do my extra, maybe cardio personal development, then I go home and then I can shower right? And get ready. And now I could be with my family and kids. I have now primed my brain and primed my body physically to feel good for the day, to feel energized. Now guys, is every day going to be perfect? No. Are some days maybe your routine gets cut a little bit short? Yes. Is it going to be hard to show up every single day? Yes, but it's not meant to be easy. 98% of the world lives life by default. Two percenters, those people that live by design, that are going out there, that are crushing their goals, that are achieving things, it's the two percenters that are willing to do the hard things, willing to do things like this, right? But guys, it's going to be hard. It's going to be, it's going to be challenging. Just work at being consistent. Work at doing the things more times than you don't do it. Work at improving a little bit each day right? And as you improve, there's something called habit stacking as we wrap up. It's where you add one more thing that to what you're doing now or add one new habit. And then once you start getting good at it, add another habit. So maybe tomorrow you're like, David, I got, I got the meditation app. I'm going to work at that for a week. And that's all you do. Great. The next week, have the, the meditation app and then maybe stack on a positive audio affirmation app and now you have two things and do that for a week or two weeks. Then add in, you know what? I'm going to do both of those things and then I'm going to go out for a walk for 30 minutes and you do that. That's habit stacking, okay? And eventually, they become routines where you do it without even thinking. That is me. I, that is my routine every single day. So guys, that's my morning routine for you. I hope and really hope you take what I'm saying seriously. You stop blaming other people. You take ownership of your life that you're like, David, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And you finally go out there and live your life up to your fullest potential. You deserve to feel good. You deserve to excel in your life. You deserve to to go out there and achieve your goals and to not just survive each day, but to thrive each day. So stop accepting your life for what it is and start leading your life to where you want to go. 
and you have 100% control of that, wrapped up in something called the law of decision. Right now, up until this point, I want you to understand you are a product of the choices and decisions you made up until this point. But right now, after you finish this, you have a choice to what to do. You have a choice on how you react to what happens to you, and you have a choice of your decisions that will be made tomorrow. So it's your turn. It's your turn. It's your turn to go out there and make the rest of your life the best of your life to excel, to succeed, and to feel good. And I promise you, if you start your morning routine right, and you start with your night before right, shut those notifications off, you will succeed in ways you never thought possible. You will be a different person 30 days from now. But it starts with you. Nobody's doing it for you. Nobody's here to rescue you. It starts with you. Thank guys. Thank you guys. Have a good day and I will connect with you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Personal Perseverance Project. My goal every single day is to help people live up to their fullest potential. So please share this episode, subscribe to my channel, and maybe even leave a review. Be sure to connect and follow me on all my social media channels. And if you would like more information about me potentially being a keynote speaker at your event, or maybe you want to work with me one-on-one as your private coach, be sure to go to my website at davidakinspeaks.com for more information. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.